YouTube us that going the goat house is back in today's video we got some center rankings for the 2020 NFL season we went through every single offensive position with these rankings and now we're on the centers after this we'll move over to the defensive side of the ball and rank the D linemen pass rushers linebackers corners and safeties and then we'll move on to units ranking offenses defenses all that getting ready for the 2020 NFL season we'll have predictions throughout the entire season so hopefully you can join us for that Please subscribe, trying to reach 60K by week one of the NFL. And uh, go ahead and follow our Twitter and follow that podcast. There's a link down below, description and comments, every single video. For any of these links that you may need here, would really appreciate the support. But on to the center rankings again. This is for the 2020 season, so basically predictions. Uh, Austin Blythe for the Rams at 32. It's pretty tough to predict who they'll actually play. The Rams, that is, majority of the season at center. They're kind of switching some guys around. Austin Corbett who they uh, traded for from the Browns, obviously has experience at guard and center. Uh, but towards the end of the year, they had Blythe in there as well. Uh, for the Giants, Spencer Pulley, it's another tough situation. He's really the only one on the roster that I'm pretty confident that it's going to start week one, but did not play majority of the snaps last year. So we're going to see what the Giants are up to. You know, the interior offense line looks good, mainly because the guards, this is kind of their weaker spot there on the interior. Uh, Mason Cole expected to start. Uh, they do have Galliard from Georgia a couple years ago. They drafted him, uh, but and they had A.Q. Shipley starting last year. So I'm thinking it's Mason Cole this year uh, for for the Arizona Cardinals. We're going to see uh, some of these teams towards the bottom kind of kind of a toss-up. Same with the Seahawks. They signed B.J. Finney from the Steelers. The guy can play guard, can play center. Uh, they have Ethan Posich who can play uh, guard or center, but I expect him at guard, maybe even backup guard. Um and Joey Hunt, of course, can play center. He got some reps last year. But I think B.J. Finney should be the guy there at center. Uh, but we're going to see. You never know what Seattle's doing with their offensive line. You know, I wish they would, I know, easier said than done, wish they would kind of go out there and complete that thing, that offensive line for Russell Wilson there. A little bold here. I'm saying Tyler Biotish, the rookie from Wisconsin, starts majority of the season for the Cowboys. I don't know if he starts week one. They probably go Joe Looney week one. I think Biotish ends up starting most of the season. Uh, question is, Looney, can, can he stay healthy? Um, but Biotis has the upside as well and could, could be better right away as well. So, um, you know, I was talking about him kind of being a, a not as talented, obviously, especially right away, but a, a pretty similar style center interior offense lineman as Travis Frederick, who retired, and they end up with Biotis. So I, th I think they get going on him pretty early on there. Good run blocker. Uh, Trey Hopkins for the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, I believe he'll be the starter. They have Billy Price as well, which that project hasn't really worked out. So I think they kind of go Hopkins full full term here, but he struggled a bit as well. So another one that's kind of up in the air. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. if they, It seems like that coaching staff didn't really want Billy Price in there after his early struggles in his career, but still, I guess still has some upside. Uh, the Denver Broncos could go a few different options as well. Uh, Graham Glasgow, who can play center, I have him projected to play start at guard. Uh, but Lloyd Cushenberry, who they draft from LSU, was their center, had a very good season there. Uh, I believe he can start at center. We've seen it a lot. You know, teams draft guys mid-rounds, they just put them in there at, at center. Uh, you definitely see that a lot, so I think it's very realistic here. Ted Karras coming from the New England Patriots, going to the Miami Dolphins, uh, I believe will start for them. He was the Patriots' backup. He got some, uh, you know, playing time due to Andrew's injury there, but uh, Karras was pretty solid for them, will he be? You know, the same talent level with the Miami Dolphins, a little different offense line. I, I still think they're getting some players together. I don't think he's their long-term answer for center. They're probably still searching for that guy. Uh, but but I, th I still think they kind of get an upgrade at that position with him. Uh, moving on, we got Nick Martin from the Texans at 24. The I mean, he could be better in this. You know, the offensive line starting to uh, kind of get, you know, get put together here. It's kind of been a mess over the last few years, but... Uh, they got their set guys, and that, that's a good thing. So every every piece can start to play better. Austin Ryder here for the Chiefs at number 23. A lot of these guys in this range I think are pretty even. It's tough to split these guys up. Uh, but we have a rookie in here, Cesar Ruiz, who was the top rookie center in the draft. Interesting situation with the Saints uh, because they drafted Eric McCoy last year, who actually just last year alone, obviously his only year playing, played like a top 10 center in football easily. Uh, but it sounds like, nothing guaranteed, it sounds like they'll move him to guard, and Ruiz, who played center for Michigan, uh, will play center. 
Uh, so I, if Eric McCoy was, uh, if I was confident he was still their center, he'd be way up the list. Uh, and Ruiz could do the same thing. You know, the Saints are confident. You know, he can play like a top 10 center this year. It's definitely a possibility. It's tough, though. It's tough to see what they'll do. It sounds like McCoy will play, will play guard. Ruiz will play center. Uh, and we'll see how that works out for them. I got him ranked at 22 for now. Weston Richburg at 21. Uh, yeah, one week looks, you know, like a top 15, top 10 center. And then one week maybe like a bottom 10. Uh, really good scheme over there. Offense line works really well together. Some changes in there, obviously. There's going to be a cha change with a starting guard. And then uh, Trent Williams out there at the left tackle. So we'll see how the offense line plays this year. Uh, Garrett Bradbury for the Vikings, a tough one to rank, was the top prospect, center prospect a year ago. Um, and a tough one to rank because in terms of run blocking was pretty – Pretty impressive for a rookie last year. Really impressive in terms of pass protection. Not so much. You know, he he struggled a bit in the pass protection. So, yeah, one side really good. One side not so much. Uh, but second year being a top prospect a year ago, I we all expect him to improve. Putting him at 20 for now, we need to see some see some improvement in the pass protection. But very impressive run blocking, but that's really not that that surprising, I guess, because we kind of expect him to be there. Uh, Marquise Pouncey of the Steelers. Uh, yeah, last year showed maybe he, he could be on the decline a little bit there. Could be time to replace him um, soon, but then still does have his moments. I guess consistency is the question. 18, Matt Paradis, I thought was a big-time signing for the Panthers last offseason. Didn't really play to that level, though. Uh, but I think here in the second year, especially with the better coaching staff for the offense specifically, I think he could start to step up. So I don't know if he really played like the number 18 center, even though we expect him to play better in this last year. Maybe he could get back on track. Chase Rollier uh, of the Redskins, uh, I think a good young center. You know, I don't know if a lot of people are talking about him. A uh, good young center from Wyoming a few years ago. I, I, I think he can continue, continue to improve as well. Uh, there for the Redskins, we're on to the top 16. I got Matt Skura uh, of the Ravens at 16. Offense line was a really good unit together last year. Uh, we'll see if they can continue that. Uh, the Jets get Connor McGovern, was on the Broncos. I expect him to start at center, but he can play guard as well. But I think a bit of an upgrade there for the Jets for this year. Mike Pouncey of the Chargers at 14. Uh, yeah, we've seen some, an injury for him last year. Uh, the Pouncey brothers could be declining a little bit just based on their play recently, uh, but I, you know, I, I still think they still got some some uh, left in the tank there. Mitch Morse at 13 for the Bills. Uh, I expect he, yeah, him to step up a little bit this year, but play, played pretty solid. The off, another unit starting to come together. So you know, once the unit starts to play, you know, better. Once you complete that unit, you know, everyone starts to play better. Corey Lindsley of the Packers coming in at number 12. Uh, yeah, some changes in the offensive line. So we'll see the Packers' offensive line has been pretty darn good for some time. Um, you know, I think Elgin Jenkins, who was a star at the end of last year, will get kind of the full-time role there. And then the right tackle change as well, Rick Wagner. So we'll see how it does there. Uh, David Andrews back with the Patriots here. You know, he uh, has the injury concern, of course. Uh, but uh, I do think, yeah, borderline top 10 center here. So he comes at number 11, J.C. Treader of the Browns. At number 10, pretty much him and Batonio, uh, you know, keeping that offensive line together last year, which was, it's pretty impressive because like, like I always talk about, you know, the rest of your entire unit, you're as good as your unit sometimes. So those guys being able to hold the, the run blocking together for Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, pretty impressive. So he's a top 10 center in my opinion. Number nine is going to be Alex Mack, who you could consider for quite some time as the top center in football. And he's still, you know, you see how close, like maybe the top nine, top 10, actually are here um but yeah he you know you, you can't really expect him to play that what you know that great you know number one center great at this point in his career but uh very impressive career for sure um for for Alex Mack there and the, and the Falcons moving on to the top eight I got Brandon Linder of the Jags at number eight kind of an offensive lineman that yeah not a big name kind of came out of nowhere a couple years ago was pretty big for the Jags last year open up some hole help open some some holes for uh, Leonard Fournette, who had a pretty good year statistically there. Ryan Kelly at number seven, very good unit. We've seen him part of the unit when it was rough, though, and now that it's thriving, um, you know, he's also picking up his game. So that kind of goes back to the unit for the offensive lines. Um, you're, you're almost as good as your unit there. Uh, ben Jones, I thought, had a career year. Always like kind of an average center, but he had, a, he had a really good year last year. 
another unit that's been coming together recently. Added Saffold to the mix. I think that helps every every guy there, especially Ben Jones. Big piece of the run blocking for Derrick Henry. Frank Ragnow for the Lions. I think a very solid young center. Uh, maybe it wasn't number five. Maybe it wasn't top five last year. I don't think too far off based on last year alone. But because he's young, because he's still kind of getting that upside, I think it, it, now is the time that he can become a top five center here. So it's definitely one to look out for for the Lions. Uh, top four, I got Cody White here at number four. I wouldn't base too much off of last year. Um, a lot of switching around, you know, not in terms of positions too, actually. Cody Whitehair, James Daniels, that for some reason they decided to swap those guys. Um, and Whitehair played guard first half of the season, which was very confusing. Uh, even though he's solid at guard, I just think he's a pretty darn good center, obviously. Uh, and then some blocking scheme changes throughout the year as well, trying to figure out, uh, you know, what, what, what their identity is offensively. And that kind of was part of the struggles. But Whitehair, when you know when he's in there, his right position, uh, and then when you know when everything's going right there, he's he's a very dominant center. I've seen him, uh, you, you know, block you know potentially the nose tackle at the line, then get downfield with, um, you know, the running back with a Tariq Cohen who's getting outside as well and block the next guy downfield, a linebacker or whoever. You know, I've seen that so many times from him. Uh, so I th I think he's a really good young center here. I got the top three uh, separate themselves, in my opinion. So, so tight for the most part. You know, they really separate themselves from the rest. Ronnie Hudson at number three, still balling out for that Raiders offense. Another unit that's really come together and helped even the good guys that were guys that were good before play a more consistent game like Rodney Hudson. Uh, you know, probably a top two guy based on the past, uh, even though Ryan Jensen had a big-time year last year. He had a really good year last year, but I do put him at two because, you know, Tom Brady uh, leading the way there, making the adjustments at the line. You know, Bruce Arians' second year, that, that offensive staff, that staff's second year, I think only helps the guy who that just had a career year there at center, uh, and I think you only can go up from here. So I put him at number two. Even though the top three is pretty tight, didn't really have to think too much. Uh, I got Jason Kelsey at number one, a, a game that you definitely can respect a whole, uh, you know, a whole lot. A beast of a dude. You know, a couple years ago, <clears throat> a few years ago, there was actually rumors about, you know, potential retirement. Perhaps uh, I don't know how true those were, but I think they were coming up because he had so many different injuries in that one year. Uh, and he played through quite a bit of them, too. So I guess it was a little scary, you know, having, like, multiple injuries in one year. I think it was three different injuries, uh, you know, and playing through them as much as he could. So it's, that it's just you got to respect it. You know, it's a guy who just wants to get out there and play no matter what, loves the game. So, uh, and he plays at a high level, continues to play at a high level despite those things that came up. Um, so a big piece of that offensive line, of course, there. And they, and they lost Brooks, unfortunately, for the year. So guys like this are going to have to play their best ball, hopefully stay healthy. It's always the, you know, the recent uh, question for the Eagles. Stay healthy. We know they're a really good ball team there. Um, so I got I do got Kelsey at number one there, of course. Uh, and then you guys can let me know your thoughts, your rankings in the comments. Please click that like button. Subscribe to both of our channels. Check out that Twitter. Would really appreciate all of that. Thanks, everyone, for the support. Thanks for watching. That's going to do it. Goodbye.